Hi, Arm here. Today I am going to talk about an anime named that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 2. The main character rules over all monsters as a slime, but his country is invaded by humans, and even his favorite subordinate is dead. To take revenge, he kills tens of thousands of soldiers and cuts off the hand of the arrogant king, forcing him to become his captive. He summons a demon to search for any survivor. Only if he kills enough humans can he become a demon lord to get his dead subordinates resurrected. The main character is named Ramuru. When he just becomes the leader of the Jura Tempest Federation, he actively establishes diplomatic relations with other countries. The Orkland worships the strong and likes fighting. When the envoys of the Orkland just arrive in the Federation, they start to fight against Ramuru's subordinates. Among them, Cheyenne and a tiger girl are having a fierce fight. One is a wicked Oni born with strong combat power, and the other has rare blood of the white tiger claw. They are both top soldiers of their countries with close speed and power. As they are fighting much of a muchness, Cheyenne uses the skill she just learned. An energy ball becomes bigger and bigger in her hand, with a horrible aura around it. Soldiers of the Orkland can tell the energy ball's strong power and they quickly surrender to avoid getting hurt. However, Cheyenne can't well control the new skill, and the huge energy ball is about to explode. At the critical moment, Ramura reaches out one of his hands and swallows it, causing the magic power to immediately disappear. All the orc soldiers on the spot are shocked and then they show their respect to Ramuru. After that, the orc land has a friendly communication with the Federation, and they are conquered by the brandy made by Ramuru. Finally, they leave some orcs to learn the technique. Later, Ramura visits the king of the dwarf land, Gazel, with his subordinates. On his way, he comes to the elven bard that he loves most. Unfortunately, the female fair Oni, Shuna and Shia notice it. They angrily blow up at Ramuru, and he can only guiltily accept it. After that, he heads to another kingdom to save Shizui's students. This is the end of season 1. In these days, the demon lord, Clayman, is secretly making a plan to destroy the Jura Tempest Federation. After Ramuru leaves the Federation, he starts his action. He asks one of his subordinates, Myurin, to sneak into the Federation. Myurin's heart is controlled by Clayman with the occult and she may die at any time. To get back her heart, she will use any means. However, when she meets Ramura's friend, Yom, who has a big smile, she changes her mind. They have fun in the Federation, just like a couple. Meanwhile, another trap of Clayman works. Pharma's kingdom is holding a royal meeting. The king is furious at the rapid drop in the volume of trade. The bishop of the church says it is caused by the rise of the Jura Tempest Federation, which steals their business. The king decides to launch a war, gathering 20,000 soldiers of the church and the kingdom to fight against the Federation. To find an excuse for starting a war, the king intends to send his subordinates to drive a wedge between the two kingdoms, and the best candidates are the three transmigrationers summoned by the kingdom. Each of them has the supreme strength of humans and the special abilities of transmigrationers. There is no doubt that the Jura Tempest Federation will face a fierce war. Meanwhile, the demon lord, Malim appears in Clayman's castle. She is naive and simple, but now, she looks completely different. In the Jura Tempest Federation, key genes get a piece of information through the crystal ball that Malin declares war on the Orcs Kingdom, and people are heading to the Federation to take refuge. This war shocks everyone on the spot, but it is just part of Clayman's plan. Soon, the Transmigrationers sneak into the Jura Tempest Federation. They claim to be attacked by the monsters on the street, turning the Federation into chaos. Among them, a girl can control her opponent's actions with words. A man named Taguchi is good at close combat and is also the toughest enemy to deal with. When patrolling, Cheyenne and Shuna notice something abnormal, immediately getting ready to fight. At the same time, Myurin shows her real identity as Clayman ordered. When she intends to envelop the whole Federation with blocking barrier magic, Yong notices it. He then tightly hugs her, asking her not to make an irreparable mistake. After wavering between love and life, she finally casts the magic by force. The Divine Oni, Benimaru is about to report to Ramuru through the crystal ball, but he failed due to the barrier. He then hurriedly asks Sui to use the doppelganger to tell Ramuru about it in the teleportation circle outside the barrier. Meanwhile, the army of the Pharma's kingdom has assembled at the border of the Jura Tempest Federation and cooperated with Myurin to set the second barrier, which is used to weaken the magic power of monsters. Later, the barrier works. Cheyenne and other Kijins are all defeated by humans. Transmigrationers are at an advantage, but they pretend to be victims and call for help. The soldiers of the Pharma's kingdom take the chance to break into the Federation, killing monsters everywhere with an excuse of protecting citizens, causing the Jura Tempest Federation to face the danger of being destroyed. 
Meanwhile, when Ramura just parts with his students, he receives the information given by Sui's doppelganger, and then realizes that the contact is interrupted. When he intends to go back to his federation to check the situation, he is trapped by a small barrier and is unable to use magic power. The barrier is created by Hinata, the commander of the Holy Knight Order, who heard that Ramuru had killed her teacher Shizue and comes to take revenge on him. Regardless of Ramura's explanation, she fiercely attacks him with a sword. Holy Knights are the monster's natural enemies and Ramuru is totally no match for her. He intends to resist Hinata's attack with his strong healing ability. However, her attacks will directly damage enemies' souls, and they must die after being attacked seven times. After a few rounds, Ramuru is attacked six times. He quickly frees the fire elf inside his body to fight. However, Hinata has a special ability and almost takes away the elf, so he can only turn into a combination of various monsters to fight. Unfortunately, during his transformation, he is attacked again and becomes a non-soul zombie that only attacks. Hinata takes the chance to trap Ramuru with an elf she summons. Afterwards, a holy light appears and burns Ramuru into ashes. Hinata is confident that she wins the battle. After she lifts the barrier and leaves with satisfaction, a slime furtively gets out from the grass, which is exactly Ramuru. He has realized that he couldn't defeat Hinata, so he divides his body into two parts and hides in the grass secretly. Ramuru has no time to think about where Hinata heard of the rumor, and it is now the most important thing for him to go back to the Jura Tempest Federation. He then sends himself to a place near the Federation with magic. After listening to his subordinates report on the battle, he anxiously breaks into the barrier, only to see burned houses and blood along the way from the border to the center of the Federation. In the square, he also sees piles of monsters' bodies and no humans at all. He soon gets furious and holds a meeting to ask about the battle. It turns out that the soldiers who broke into the Federation are from the Farmer's Kingdom and the Church, and they kill a lot of citizens in the Federation. Before they left, they said the Jura Tempest Federation must surrender in a week, otherwise, they will wipe out all disobedient monsters. Myurin, who created the barrier, was captured by Benimaru and is left to Ramuru to deal with her. Myurin reveals all the secrets, begging Ramuru not to punish Yom, who took her into the Federation. Ramuru is very confused and decides to imprison Myurin first. What he wants to do now is to check the loss of his federation. He finds many monsters got injured and most of them get recovered, but some of them still lost their lives, including his secretary, Cheyenne. Ramuru is shocked. The naughty girl now has become a cold body. It arouses anger in his mind, but he sheds no tears, which makes him feel that he has completely become a monster and lost the emotions of humans. Now he can only swallow all bodies to let them rest in peace. Just then, the adventurers he saved before stop him, telling him that there is a way of getting dead bodies resurrected recorded in a fairy tale. There once was a human giving birth to a girl with a dragon. The girl was raised as the dragon's successor. Her dragon father had turned one of its doppelgangers into a small dragon to be its daughter's plaything. The king of the kingdom was greedy. He tried to control the girl and killed the small dragon that guarded her. She then went berserk and eliminated hundreds of thousands of citizens and killed the king with the power inherited from her father. After that, the girl evolved to be a demon lord. As for the small dragon, it miraculously got resurrected. However, it only caused destruction everywhere because it lost its soul and became uncontrollable. The adventurers say his dead subordinates may get resurrected after he becomes a demon lord as long as their souls are not wiped out. The barriers happen to prevent their souls from disappearing. Ramuro hurriedly asks the Daikinja and then knows there is a 3.14% probability that this plan will succeed. The Daikinja also says it is necessary to obtain enough magic power and kill at least 10,000 humans for becoming a demon lord. Hearing this, Ramura comes up with a complete plan. He pardons Myurin first, asking her to create a new barrier for him, which is used to prevent the souls from disappearing after he breaks the old barrier. After that, he starts to collect information. The army that invaded the Federation before is just an advanced team, and there will be an army of 20,000 soldiers afterwards. Hearing the number, he shows a terrifying smile. The barrier created by the enemy was formed of four magic circles. Based on this information, he divides his subordinates into four teams to attack, and he will face the 20,000 soldiers in person. After getting the order, his subordinates immediately start their action. Geld and one of the Kijins are sent to invade the base where the Transmigrationers are. The Transmigrationers underestimate monsters, not knowing that it was the barriers that gave them the chance to win. An arrogant boy, whose ability is to see every detail of enemies' movements, attacks the Kijin first. However, he moves much slower than the Kijin. Though he can see every movement of the Kijin, he can't react in time. Finally, he can do nothing when his neck is cut off by the Kijin. 
Meanwhile, Taguchi can easily gain the edge with his strong close combat power. Then, Gale counterattacks in a special way. His skills can directly have effects on enemy souls. Though being good at defending himself, Taguchi can't resist Gale's skill, causing him to be at a disadvantage. When he sees the Kijin taking his companion's head, he is too scared to speak. In order to survive, he attacks his another companion in the base and makes her soul a sacrifice, thus gaining a healing skill, with which he can soon get recovered even if his head is cut off. However, the healing skill makes him more painful. He is tortured by Geld and howls in pain. Luckily, the magician who summoned him before comes to rescue him in time and takes him to the base. But Taguchi is not completely saved. The magician wipes out his soul and possesses his body. It turns out that the magician has been guarding his kingdom for hundreds of years and keeps being alive by sacrificing transmigrationers. Meanwhile, Ramuru flies above the enemies and is about to take revenge on them. To avoid the enemies escaping with teleportation magic, he envelopes the whole base with a barrier. After that, he casts a wide range and powerful skill. Countless trips appear in the base, easily piercing through the soldiers' bodies and killing them. Instantly, the base is full of desperate howls. Even the magician, such a powerful enemy, is killed in an instant. The king and the bishop shiver with fear, quickly revealing their identities and begging Ramuru for mercy. The king seems to be unaware of the danger. Seeing Ramuru stop attacking, he immediately becomes arrogant again, offering to establish diplomatic relations with the Jura Tempest Federation. Just like Ramuru is begging for his charity, Ramuru impatiently cuts off one of his arms, making him realize that he is unqualified to negotiate with him. After that, Ramuru intends to become a demon lord at first and leave them aside. He learned a new skill from the killing just now. If someone loses his fighting spirit, his soul will be taken away by Ramuru. After suffering such a fierce attack, the surviving soldiers all lose their will to fight, so their souls are all taken away. At this time, the Daikinja's voice appears in Ramuru's mind, saying that he is about to evolve into a demon lord. Besides, the Daikinja finds someone hiding. Suddenly, Ramuru feels a strong sense of sleepiness, which is a sign of evolution. He quickly lifts the barrier when he is still awake, and then summons three demons with all the dead bodies of soldiers on the spot as sacrifices, ordering the three demons to find the hiding one. Finally, he asks the Wolf King to take him and the two humans back to the Federation. After giving these orders, he falls into a coma. At the same time, there is a great change inside his body. He gains many new abilities, and his old skills also get improved. Among them, the Daikinja evolves to be Referu and has his own personality. Meanwhile, because the monsters of the Federation were all named by Ramuru, their souls get connected to Ramuru's soul. When he becomes a demon lord, the monsters all get promoted and fall into a coma. Besides, the dead citizens gain the possibility of getting resurrected. Referu controls Ramuru's body to collect all souls wandering around and break the barrier, planning to get the dead citizens resurrected. At this moment, the three demons find the magician, who is pretending to be dead. Thinking they are just normal demons, the magician summons a high-level elf to fight. Soon, the leader of the three demons casually eats the elf as a cookie. The magician has never seen such a horrible scene for hundreds of years. He then shouts out a guess in surprise that it is the oldest demon. The leader of demons doesn't deny it and takes the magician back to the Federation. When the leader of demons comes back, he happens to see Referu collecting souls. Out of loyalty to the summoner, he says Ramuru's magic power is not enough to get the dead resurrected, and offers to sacrifice the two demons around him to replenish their master's magic, saying that it is their honor. Referu knows it is right and takes this advice. He once estimated the success probability of the plan at 3.14%, but now Ramuru's magic power is more than 10 times stronger than before. Plus he swallowed two demons, so the probability of success has reached 100%. Instantly, with the powerful magic power, Cheyenne and other dead subordinates gradually open their eyes. When Ramuru wakes up, he sees Cheyenne, the energetic girl, in front of him, looking at her familiar bright smile. He feels relieved. When they are celebrating the reunion, the arrogant soldiers of the Orc Land come to the Jura Tempest Federation and bow their heads to ask for Ramuru's help. It turns out that not long ago, Malim declared war on Carillon, the king of the Orc Land, and they had a fierce fight in the capital of the Orc Land. Carillon summoned a golden bird and it rushed towards Malim, causing a great explosion in the air. However, Malim didn't get hurt at all. When she attacked Carillon, the capital was burned into ruin. It seems that there is also a gap between demon lords. At this point, another demon lord, Fry, who is called the Sky Queen, attacked Carillon from behind and killed him. The orc soldiers saw everything and tells it to Ramuru, saying that the two demon lords flew towards Clayman's castle. Ramuru guesses it is Clayman's conspiracy. 
He orders his subordinates to collect information about Clayman, and then he notices the demon he summoned before not disappear and still loyal to him. Ramura names it Diablo. Unexpectedly, he consumes one-third of his magic power to name it, even though his current magic power is ten times stronger than before. At this moment, Rafera tells him the exciting information that the barrier used to seal the storm dragon Veldora is all swallowed by him. Hearing this, Ramuru hurriedly finds a place to create a new body and unseal his friend. After being sealed for 300 years, Veldora finally comes to the world again. He is so excited and curious about everything. Meanwhile, two nobles of the neighboring country and the king of Dwarfland, Gazel, come to the Jura Tempest Federation with an intention of asking about the war, not knowing that it is over. Ramura takes the chance to discuss how to deal with the aftermath with them. At the same time, there is also a meeting held on the other side of the world. Yuki, the leader of the guild, and Laplace, the clown, also attend the meeting. It was Yuki who revealed Rimuru's information to Inanna. He and the clowns have been secretly working together to get the demon lord Kazalim, who has been dead for 200 years, resurrected. Kazalim is the leader of clowns, and Clayman is also one of her subordinates. They all have a same goal to sneak into the church in search of something, and they notice the vampire demon Lord Luminous is guarding the church. Luminous is as powerful as Kazalim at his peak, so they can only figure out another way. Finally, they decide to hold a meeting of demon lords to lure Luminous away. On the meeting, all demon lords will discuss the plan together. Based on the rule, the meeting will be held as long as three demon lords agree to it. Now they have Malim, Clayman and Fry, so their plan can definitely work. Clayman accepts their suggestion. He senses the scent of Ramuru becoming a demon lord and decides to take the chance to kill him. Besides, he also intends to take over the orc land. Now he is just an ordinary demon lord, and he plans to evolve into a stronger variant demon lord by killing all citizens of the orc land. Meanwhile, Ramuru is introducing his friend, Veldora to the guests in the Federation. Everyone is shocked that the horrible and powerful storm dragon Veldora can get back to the world and turn to Ramuru, thinking that they should get along well with him. After discussing the plan, the leaders of several kingdoms decide to make a lie together. Before knowing their plan, let's learn about the Variant Demon Lord. Only Demon Lords can evolve into Variant Demon Lords under certain conditions. Ramuru and Nalim are all Variant Demon Lords, while the leader of Orcs and Carillon are ordinary Demon Lords. It can be seen that there is a big gap between the two kinds of Demon Lords from the battle in which Carillon was overwhelmed by Malim. Ramuru decides to declare that he has become a Demon Lord to intimidate other kingdoms, but he doesn't want to expose his identity identity as a variant demon lord. Besides, he will also announce that the Pharma's kingdom invaded the Jura Tempest Federation. During the war, the storm dragon Veldora was accidentally unsealed, causing the Pharma's kingdom to be eliminated. He and the hero, Yom persuaded Veldora to stop killing at the cost that all citizens in Jura Tempest Federation would worship Veldora as a god. In addition, he plans to back Yom as the new king of the Pharma's kingdom and send Diablo to cause a civil war in this kingdom with Yom. With Gazel's intelligence, these clever and meticulous plans are made. After the information is spread out, the Elf Queen, Ramiris is the first to congratulate Ramuru on becoming a Demon Lord. Besides, she also tells him that Clayman will hold a meeting to discuss how to eliminate Ramuru, who claims himself as a Demon Lord, to avoid being attacked by other Demon Lords. Ramuru decides to defend himself in the meeting in person. At this point, Clayman sends his subordinate, Yamza, to head to the Orc land with an army of 30,000 soldiers. The Orcs feel anxious, thinking that Clayman intends to get involved with the remaining citizens in Orc land and their kingdom is about to face the crisis of extinction. Ramura thinks it will be a chance for him to defeat Clayman. He then asks Raferu about how to cast wide-range teleportation magic to send all citizens of Orc land to take refuge in the Federation. After that, he brings all of his armies and soldiers of Orc land together, 40,000 soldiers in total, asking Benimaru, the strongest among genes, to be the leader. He then asks Veldora to guard the Federation because Veldora can come to help him at any time. After giving the orders, they are ready to head to the Orc land. It will be the first large-scale operation of the Federation. And and all soldiers are heading to the battlefield with great fighting spirit. Before the 40,000 soldiers reach the front, Yamza comes to Malim's base and summons Malim's minions. Yamza always hits them, treating them as servants. The leader of these minions is more powerful than Yamza, however, he can only reluctantly obey Malim's order with grievances. Let's have a short look at the past. Before Malim declared war on Carillon, the Sky Queen Fry pretended to be kind to Malim and gave her a beautiful necklace. Being simple, Malim didn't doubt her. However, when she just put on the necklace, her eyes lost their luster. After that, Clayman proudly showed up. He has the ability to control creatures, and this necklace was the medium for casting magic. He rudely hit Malim to the ground and enjoyed the pleasure of trampling the strongest demon lord with a burst of maniacal laughter. 
back to the present time. The two demon lords, Leon and Guy, are talking about what happened in the Federation with a dragon. Veldora's sister, Leon may be one of the smartest demon lords. He can deduce Ramuru is lying based on the spread clues, saying that Ramuru and Veldora may work together, which means that the Jura Tempest Federation will become so powerful, they all think this meeting will be extremely exciting. Meanwhile, a war has broken out at the garrison of Yamza's army. There are three battlefields at the garrison. On the first battlefield, Yamza is fighting against all bees, who is furious about Carillon's death. She directly shows all her strength, petrifying all of Yamza's subordinates. Yamza soon realizes the gap in strength with Albiz, thinking he prefers saving his life to being loyal to Clayman, so he decides to flee and turn to other demon lords. However, Clayman has already secretly controlled Yamza with his ability. As soon as Yamza starts to flee, he uncontrollably takes out a mysterious crystal ball and swallows it. Accompanied by Yamza's screams, Charybdis appears in the center of the battlefield, which is obviously born with Yamza's body as the host. On another battlefield, several high-ranking generals of the Jura Tempest Federation and Malim's minions are having a fight. Minions are much more powerful than Yamza, while the Federation has superiority in numbers. Due to the close relationship between Malim and Ramuru, neither of them fights with all their efforts. As Charybdis shows up, they all stop. Minions say this monster is the remnant of Charybdis's power. It will become stronger and stronger by constantly swallowing the bodies on the battlefield. At this rate, everyone on the spot will die. At the critical moment, Benimaru burns the monster into ashes with black flames he learned from Ramuru. As one of the most powerful subordinates of Ramuru, he has become as strong as demon lords. The Jura Tempest Federation has won the two battles, but a hidden game is still not over, which is the third battle between the two kingdoms. Geld and Orc soldiers meet two clowns and attack them. However, they are all overwhelmed by the two clowns, even though the clowns don't fight seriously. Luckily, the clowns run away due to Yamza's failure. Meanwhile, Ramuru orders three Kijins led by Shina to launch a sudden attack on Clayman's castle, intending to weaken their strength as much as possible. A skeleton magician is guarding the castle. He is the commander of the skeleton army, which includes huge skeleton dragons and skeleton swordsmen with superb swordsmanship. Shuna knows it is impossible for the three of them to eliminate all skeletons, and only by defeating the skeleton magician can they win the fight. She asks the two Kijins to deal with the skeleton army, while she fights against the skeleton magician alone. They both launch attacks with magic that they are good at. To the magician's surprise, Shuna is casting divine magic. The skeleton magician, a framed priest who believes that divine magic can only be used by devout human believers, has never used divine magic to remove Clayman's control. Shuna denies it, saying that divine magic can be cast as long as there is a firm belief and her magic power comes from the worship of Ramuru. Hearing this, the skeleton magician silently chants the incarnation, successfully lifting the control. Besides, he can also cast the divine magic that he was best at before. Although far inferior to Shuna, he desires to gain this strength as powerful as Shuna, so he joins the Jura Tempest Federation, causing Clayman's castle to be controlled by the Federation. At the same time, Ramuru and Ramiris enter a portal, and the meeting of demon lords officially begins. Each demon lord has a terrible aura. Among them, Gi has the strongest sense of oppression, who is said to have existed since the world is created and is the strongest demon lord, just like Malim. Later, Clayman walks in with Malim. As he shows up, he punches Malim in front of others to show his strength. Strangely, Malim has no reaction at all, which shocks everyone. Ramuru feels extremely furious, deciding to make Clayman pay the price. Clayman lies that Carillon and Ramuru have joined forces to interfere with the human world, calling on other demon lords to execute Ramuru. After that, Ramuru shows the truth with a crystal ball to expose Clayman's lie. They then start to argue fiercely, even intending to turn the conflict into a fight. However, demon lords are not that easy to be incited, and most of them decide to wait and see. Ki, who likes looking on, says that Ramuru will be officially admitted by them as long as he defeats Clayman, thus causing a fight between Ramuru and Clayman. It is both an opportunity for Ramuru to become a demon lord and a chance for Clayman to kill Ramuru. Clayman orders Malim to attack Ramuru. When Ramuru resists Malim's attack, Shuna rushes to punch Clayman, causing him to vomit blood. It seems that Clayman is only good at mind control and is not powerful. He quickly summons a golden huge fox to help him in the fierce fight. However, Ramuru is totally no match for Malim, and he almost gets killed after a few rounds. At the critical moment, Veldora comes to him and blocks Malim's fierce attacks. He then takes the chance to lift Clayman's control of the Golden Fox, so that Shuna can fight with all her strength. Clayman ties Shuna with silks, intending to control her mind, but it doesn't work at all. He can only show all his power by revealing his real appearance, which is a monster with six hands. However, the magic ball that he created with all his strength causes no harm to Shuna. Shuna then constantly slashes at Clayman with a giant sword in the air, and finally kicks through his body. 
Clayman is desperate and hurriedly asks Fry for help. However, she closes her eyes and pretends not to see it, so he can only order Malim to help him, but she directly refuses. It turns out Malim has never got controlled, and she only wants to find out the commander behind Clayman, so she and Fry coact a show. Caroline's death is also faked by them, and the real Caroline has been hiding beside Fry. Except for Clayman and Ramuru, demon lords on the spot are not surprised at it. It seems that no one thinks Malin can be controlled by Clayman. Such a weak one. Clayman collapses, with his six hands all cut off by Shuna. Now he can't fight anymore. In fact, he is the weakest among the clowns. In order to establish himself, he represents the clowns as a demon lord. He made a deal with Yuki to help him rule the world in exchange for getting Kazalim resurrected. Clayman doesn't want to die without achieving any of his goals. He then makes his soul a sacrifice to evolve into a variant demon lord. Instantly, powerful energy fills the room. His eyes fill with flames. While his body gets extremely strong, he spews out a fire dragon to attack Ramuru. However, Ramuru just swallows it. Compared with Ramuru, Clayman, who depends on sacrificing his soul to become a demon lord, is so weak. Ramuru again defeats Clayman, forcing him to reveal the mastermind behind him. Unfortunately, though facing the threat of death, he still doesn't answer it, screaming as he is swallowed by Ramuru. Thus, Ramuru manages to get admitted. After that, Malim excitedly introduces other demon lords to him. When speaking of Luminous, she accidentally exposes Luminous' secret. It turns out that the real Luminous has been disguising herself as a maid and asks a vampire to play her role. Embarrassed, Malim quickly changes the topic, saying that it is probably Kazalim who instructed Clayman. Kazalim was one of the demon lords before, but he was killed by Leon, causing Leon to get promoted. At this point, Fry announces that she gives up being a demon lord. She can tell the gap in strength among demon lords from today's battle, and she considers herself unworthy of the title based on her current strength, deciding to turn to Malim. Carillon also thinks so, and he intends to become Malim's subordinate, because he worships the strong and is conquered by Malim's power in the battle. Plus he intends to force Malim to take on the responsibility of rebuilding the Orc land. It seems that Malim can't be as leisured as before. After that, there are only eight demon lords left. Everyone agrees to let Ramuru, the new demon lord, come up with a name for the group. Looking at the stars, Ramuru is inspired to name an octogram. A new era of demon lords officially begins. At this moment, Laplace sneaks into the church again and is attacked by Hinata. He finally escapes, but happens to meet a vampire, who rushes back after the meeting. The vampire is Luminous subordinate. He recognizes Laplace as a member of the clowns through his mask, proudly saying that Clayman was killed and threatening to kill Laplace as well. Laplace is carrying. He furiously punches the vampire's face and takes out his heart, before the vampire can react. He dies because his heart is crumbled. It seems that Clayman is really the weakest among the clowns and each clown is at least as powerful as demon lords. After getting resurrected, Kazalim gets even more horrible. What Ramuru will face must be the craziest revenge of the clowns. That brings the end of season 2. There are two top demon lords possessing supreme strength. Gi is the strongest demon in the world, while Malim is Veldora's niece. Maybe she is the dragon girl in the fairy tale. Besides, there are ten top strongmen as powerful as demon lords in human world, such as Hinata, who can overwhelm Ramuru. Due to the church's hostility towards monsters, humans are definitely eager to eliminate the Jura Tempest Federation. For now, we can only see part of the horror of this world full of the strong. I really hope this anime cannot be over. In my opinion, Ramuru's adventure in another world has just begun. Thanks for your watching. Don't don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!